Have you ever heard a switchgear panel exploding from the inside? Not because of a bomb or a sabotage, but because of something invisible, something electric. This terrifying phenomena is called as an internal arc fault. And if you are somebody who works with switchgear, this is something very important and very, very interesting and something that you cannot miss. In this video, we are going to break down what is this internal arc, why it happens, what are its effects, whether internal arc is same as that of the short circuit and a lot of questions will be answered in this video about internal arc. So make sure you watch it till the end. Internal arc faults are rare. Only few numbers of panel experience them in a year. But if they happens, it's the tragic scenario. It's the situation can get really, really worse. An internal arc fault is a, a very dangerous scenario that happens within the switchgear panel. So it is not something that is coming out of somewhere, but it is happening internally uh, within the switchgear and hence the name is internal arc arc now this internal arc can happen either between the two live phases uh, like this one you can see or it may happen between the live phase and the grounded uh, panel uh, like you can see on your screen so anything that can happen uh, can cause this internal arc now this internal arc creates an arc okay and then that arc becomes the plasma which offers furthermore uh, conductivity to uh, the current and this things can get really, really worse. Now this arc is just isn't the regular arc we are talking. This is something that can generate the temperatures up to 20,000 degrees Celsius. That is hotter than the sun's surface. So this is huge and this is a serious business that we are talking here. The things can get really, really works in case of an internal arc. And along with that heat comes explosive pressure, blinding light and violent blasts that can destroy equipment, cause fire and seriously injure anyone nearby. Now, a lot of people get confused between the short circuit and the internal arc. Okay, but these two things are different. There is a subtle difference between the short circuit and the internal arc. Now, let me explain you that one by one. So first, short circuit short circuit happens because there is something direct connection between the two phase wire or between phase wire and the ground there has to be a direct connection like this and via this direct connection the current starts flowing which is huge compared to uh, the normal current because it offers a less resistance path that is something called as a short circuit where a direct connection is involved internal arc on the other hand it's not the same way in internal arc we do not have any direct connection internal arc happens the current flows from the ionized air anywhere so it can jump from one place to another place to another place and it can just go like that way so there is no direct connection in the internal arc it happens because of the air is getting ionized and after a certain period of time that becomes a plasma which further offers you know high conductivity path to the current and the worst situation awaits the next now short circuit is not limited only within the switchgear panel it can happen outside also but on the other hand the internal arc is limited within the switchgear panel it doesn't happen outside the panel so it happens only inside uh, the enclosed equipment where the heat and pressure have nowhere to go so while both the faults involve high current internal arc adds two extra dangers intense heat and mechanical pressure the result explosions fires and serious injury risk even if the current is interrupted quickly to sum it up a short circuit might trip your fuse or breaker on the other hand the internal arc can blow up the doors of your panel now the next question that comes is if internal arc is not as same as that of short circuit then uh, is it same as that of the partial discharge well i'll also answer that question at the end of uh, this video so make sure you stick to the video but before that do consider subscribing to the channel because that's how you will be getting such interesting videos now what are the causes of uh, the internal arc let us have a look at them so first and very most common is the insulation breakdown now it can be because of uh, the aging of the insulation or maybe there is moisture present or maybe even because of the partial discharge 
or uh, there is loose connection you are connecting cable to the bus bar but while connecting it it's not very tight and uh, after a certain period of time it can be converted into an internal arc because uh, the air get ionized and the arc is stuck or maybe some foreign objects like you are working but some tool left behind or maybe some insects or even the rodents can uh, trigger the internal arc or maybe excessive dust and moisture which you know gives uh, create paths for leakage current and that's uh, again a very dangerous scenario or maybe because of the human error uh, specifically at the time of doing the maintenance something is not done properly uh, that can 100% trigger the internal arc so in short anything that compromises the air gap or insulation inside a switch gear can create Uh, the condition for an arc to form now this internal arc is very dangerous it happens very quickly and you will get almost no time to react when it happens there are four different phases defined in that number 1 is uh, the compression phase where the arc strikes instantly heating the air and creating a pressure surge inside uh, the panel you can see the pressure surge here uh, number 1 The second phase is the expansion phase. Now from the first instant of internal pressure increase a hole is formed through which the superheated air gases begins to escape. So you can see uh, this is the impact done by the internal arc fault. Now it has completely melted so whatever pressure was there uh, the hot air gases will try to escape from this hole and the pressure reaches its maximum value and starts to decrease with the release of hot air uh, that's the second phase which is the expansion phase this one you can see on uh, the waveform the third phase is the emission phase uh, this in this phase the instant energy is released as light heat sound or the molten metal and lastly the thermal phase where temperature peaks and arc energy continues to erode materials until the arc is extinguished and if the switch gear is not arc tested then it can explode the complete switch gear now the next question is why this internal arc is so dangerous and why everybody is worried about this let's quick look at some of the characteristics of this internal arc well number 1 we should be worried about Uh, the internal arc because of the high temperature it can go as high as 20000 degrees celsius and that is enough to melt the copper and aluminum almost instantly it can instantly melt the copper and aluminum so uh, that's the serious business we are talking it's certainly dangerous thing it generates pressure waves and those pressures are strong enough that even they can blow up the complete panel also uh, a blinding flash can come out and it will be enough to damage the human eye if somebody is present during that uh, scenario it can also create deafening noise and it goes up to 160 decibels so that is huge and it is good enough to damage uh, the ears and uh, the most important and the most problematic scene that happens because of internal arc is the toxic gases because the insulation is burning metal is vaporizing and that combines and becomes a very toxic gas and uh, sure that is something that we don't want to inhale so and because of all these things uh, the internal arc becomes a very very dangerous scenario and at all cost uh, this should be avoided and all of this happens at milliseconds so you get almost no time to react to all these scenarios now the next question is okay we understood what is internal arc how it is different than that of uh, the short circuit how do modern switch gear handles this so there are few ways one you build a arc containment chamber so in case if blast happens uh, the containment is capable enough to you know keep that blast within that uh, metal container and it will not go outside of that and the operators will be safe or you build the pressure relief arrangement which is very commonly used so when the pressure inside the tank goes you know beyond a certain limit the pr- pressure relief devices will open or the flaps will open and they will help the toxic gases and that pressure to go off uh, that building or that particular room and that's why you will find the arc ducts or the arc chimneys are installed in the medium and low voltage switch gear panels to avoid this uh, internal arc or few manufacturer do also provide the arc quenching devices that will immediately sense okay there is arc happening and they will immediately you know change the main current path to ground uh, thereby instantly turning off that arc 
so that can be used to you know save uh, the panel save the switch gear from the internal arc and also uh, the internal arc classification so there are standards like iec standard which defines this iec classification and if you have tested your switch gear for that then the operators can be um, you know assured of that things may not get worse in case the internal arc happens now let's talk about what are the different standards or what is iec standard is saying about this internal arc so the major standard for this is IEC 62271-200. Now this standard states that you have to test or simulate the internal arc situation on the switchgear. Basically you will have to conduct the test and if the switchgear passes that test uh, then it is it can be said that it is safe for operators to operate uh, with that switchgear. And that's why you will find the switchgears are labeled with this rating that is IAC uh, for example aflr 12.5 kilo amperes for one seconds now this indicates that the switch gear is tested for 12.5 kilo ampere for one seconds of internal arc so the simulation was made uh, and uh, the 12.5 kilo ampere for one second was given to that switch gear and uh, nothing happened i mean that's the passing criteria and the letters here AFLR indicates the testing condition. So for example, A indicates uh, the access to the switch gear. So A stands for the authorization per authorized persons only. And there is also a B letter which indicates uh, the switch gear is accessible for the local or the general public as well. And then the next three characters indicates basically the sides for which the switch gear is tested. So the front side, the lateral sides and the rear side so that is the rating of the internal arc classification or iac classification given by the iec standard now this is very important and you must pay attention to this rating while working on the switch gear now another confusing um, thing is that whether this internal arc is same as that of uh, the partial discharge well technically not but if partial discharge is ignored then it can be converted into an internal arc so it's not uh, the same but they are related to each other for sure so partial discharge is basically a slow phenomena that happens over the year in the switch gear or outside the switch gear and it can slowly erode the insulation of uh, the switch gear and if that is ignored and then it can turn into an internal arc okay but internal arc on the other hand if we compare it directly with the partial discharge uh, then it's not a slow process it's instant it the arc can happen instantly if the internal arc happens and it can explode instantly so it's not slow as that of the partial discharge uh, but it is uh, very very instant now the energy involved in the partial discharge is tiny but if you ignore it those small discharges can degrade the insulation to the point where an internal arc occurs so partial discharge is not an internal arc but if the partial discharge is ignored it can develop the internal arc well what's the lesson the lesson is that think of partial discharge as an early warning signs if you detect them using the sensors or the partial discharge monitors act quickly you might just prevent a major fault now i have a video dedicated uh, in which i'm talking about the partial discharge what is that how it happens why it happens if you're interested in knowing that i'll put a link for it down in the description you can go and check it out after this video so now let's quickly summarize the discussion that we had in this video so first is an internal arc uh, fault is a dangerous arc that occurs inside the switch gear due to insulation failure, loose connections or some foraging objects. Unlike a typical short circuit, internal arc produces extreme heat and pressure which can lead to explosions and serious injuries. These faults go through four violent phases, the compression, expansion, emission and then lastly the thermal phase. Now the modern switch gear is tested according to the IEC 62271-200 to ensure arc resistance with features like arc relief, arc containment and arc quenching systems. And lastly, uh, the partial discharge can be the early indicators. Ignore them and they might lead to an 
internal arc fault so i hope you are now clear about what is this internal arc why it happens what could be its uh, uh, consequences so uh, if you like this video consider it giving a like and maybe commenting helpful if you find it helpful enough if you are interested in learning more about the switchgear i have dedicated playlist on that i'll put link for it down in the description you can go and check it out to learn more about the switchgear so that's all for this video guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in my next one but till then keep watching keep learning